John, you're making me laugh. You gonna break up with me because of what I do on the radio? No, because of what you do to me on the radio. Damn it, Gina. Now I'm mad. You don't get it, dude. This is childish, Gina. That's all right. You're going to leave, leave, all right? I'm a man, Gina. I'm going to be all right. This is childish. I want you out. I don't even know why you're still here. Step. I want... Step. The old saying is that comedy is not science, it's an art. While everyone enjoys having a laugh, getting one is somewhat complicated. Comedians have resorted to everything, from pure debauchery to honest commentary on life, all in the name of humor. Martin Lawrence was one of the talented few who could jump from one extreme to the other with what often came off as reckless abandon. Like many legends of comedy, he made it clear that he would and could do anything for a laugh. Nowhere was this more evident than on his hit sitcom, Martin. It all started in 1994. If you're black and around the age of 30, then you probably remember Fox's Thursday night lineup of Martin, living single, in New York undercover way back when. Primetime network television had never been more black, and to kids like me, it was absolutely amazing. Not only did it provide three-dimensional characters and stories from urban communities, it proved that black and Latino viewers were worth creating material for. Yeah, we had the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and the Cosby Show, but this particular block of television was something totally different. It was grounded. It was relatable. It was hip-hop. For five seasons, Martin operated like peak episodes of Saturday Night Live, where ad-libbing and clever writing came together to create memorable comedy. Of all of Fox's Thursday night shows, Martin stood out primarily because of its star. From 1992 to 1997, Martin Lawrence played Martin Payne, an on-air personality for the fictional Detroit radio station WZUP, or... What's up? What's up? Deep down, he's a sweetheart, but on the outside, he's a total jerk, which is part of this show's magic. At its core, Martin is about an outspoken black man struggling to maintain his identity in a rapidly changing world. Most of that change had to do with Tisha Campbell's Gina Walters, Martin's strong, independent, and loving lady. Alongside their band of friends, Martin and Gina was your everyday couple trying to survive everyday struggles. At its core, Martin was more of a continuation of classics like Good Times or even The Honeymooners than any other sitcom that aired in the 90s. Granted, it doesn't have the most original archetype, but the characters in comedy are what separates it from the rest. Let's start with Tashina Arnold's often scene-stealing performance as Pamela James, the protective best friend of Gina and mortal enemy of Martin. In some alternate reality somewhere, there's an equally funny sitcom Call Pamela that follows her instead of Mr. Payne. I say this because she's basically a perfect female clone of Martin, matching him in wit and energy. Check out this clip of her spot on impression of Martin after being hypnotized during a dental visit. She's still hypnotized. Baby, she is you. Oh, baby. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Can't, can't nobody beat me but me, Jana. So, so, so what you saying? Pam, Pam's still in my stilo? I'm still in your stilo? Her traits make for a captivating adversary and one of the most enjoyably volatile relationships in television history. Carl Anthony Payne and the late Thomas Ford played Martin's best friends, the dim-witted Cole Brown and the ever-charming Tommy Strawn. Like most loyal homeboys, they often instigated strife between our central couple by pulling Martin back into his inconsiderate and unrefined alpha male ways. 
Martin and Gina's relationship is undeniably the show's foundation, but the chemistry of the cast is what shines the most. For proof, look no further than the assortment of running gags, which often had to do with hilarious roasting. And just like in real life, everyone got it. Friends, family, strangers, everyone. Martin's big ears, Gina's big head, Pam's hair, Tommy's suspicious employment, and, well, Cole. As with any good sitcom, the comedy here was layered and covered a wide range of topics like racism and sexism, alongside the outrageousness of spots like the Players Ball, the Casey and JoJo duet, and Martin's boxing match with Tommy the Hitman Hearns, there's also the seriousness of episodes like The Breakup. In addition to the special guest features from the likes of the Notorious B.I.G. and Richard Pryor, you also had some of the most memorable supporting characters in sitcom history. How could you forget Reginald Ballard's bruh man, the super chill and often intruding neighbor from the fifth floor? If all that wasn't enough, Martin played an impressive total of nine totally different characters. While some critics will point at his perpetuation of black stereotypes as a major flaw, I would argue that characters like Jerome Roscoe, Mama Payne, and the infamous Shanae Jenkins were all tongue-in-cheek, inside jokes, intended to help black people laugh at themselves as well as others. This was an inherently black production, and far from sitcoms in the 70s that were written and produced by white figures such as Norman Lear. Martin Stands is one of the best representations of the everyday urban experience. Most black people could look up to the well-off families and the Cosby show, A Different World, and A Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, but relating to them was another story. Amazingly, Martin was able to balance often outrageous comedy with genuine focus on real middle-class issues. Instead of poverty, drugs, or broken homes, we got stories about tough love, friendship, and self-identity. And that was the true genius of Martin. <laughs>